Hey, welcome back to Crimes and Closets. This is Christy in St. Louis. Hey, it's Beth coming at you from North Carolina. How are you guys? How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good. Yep. Yeah. Had a great week and now it's over and it's Saturday and I'm back in the closet. I know. I know. Saturday always feels so good. Well, you when it, when it comes along. <laughs> well, it still does to me because I feel like it's still the, like I know there's no school, even though we don't really do it on Friday most of the time. But like, I know there's no school. My husband doesn't have to work. He's in a better mood. <laughs> He was like dancing around today. Like he has way more energy and I'm just sitting there with my cup of coffee looking at him like the heck (laughs) tone it down. (laughs) Why don't I get videos of uh, dancing Emery on Saturdays? (laughs) Hmm. (laughs) We have Snapchat for a reason. So we don't get caught. Oh, true. true, true. (laughs) Um, Going on uh, outside your closet there. Outside my, I have a story from about outside my closet that happened inside my closet my <laughs> littlest one who was four was in my closet with me as I was organizing and I have sticky bras laying out in my closet not because I've worn them recently because I don't go anywhere but he they were laying out because I forgot to put the you know the thing that you put on them the plastic, the plastic that you put on them so that they're You can preserve them and store them. I don't have that plastic anymore. I threw it away because clearly I was a sticky bra virgin. And he picks it up and sticks it to his finger and is like, Mom, what is this thing sticking to my finger? (laughs) And I'm like, on both fingers, both, both hands, both cups running around my closet. What's happening? What's happening? These things are sticking to my fingers. I'm like, that's a bra. He's like, you put these on your boobs? Ow. (laughs) <laughs> do that why are they here anyway the things you should video <laughs> yeah that definitely yeah that should be that should be preserved forever I should have taken a picture of that for his future wife <laughs> always got his hands in somebody's bra she'll probably get a picture of it too when he's older I'm sure he's not gonna not do that if he sees it lying around <laughs> He is definitely that kid. Let me just touch this again to make sure it yeah. still does the same thing it did last time I tried it out. <laughs> That's funny. Mm. How about you? What's going on with you? <sighs> or honestly, not a whole lot, really. Um, we are just getting through. You know, taking one day at a time, and it's all going very well, surprisingly. So we're That's good. Fun. I'll take it. Yeah. Also, while we're talking about things going well, let's give a Crimes and Closets shout out to a listener, Kelsey Hart's Cats, for a super sweet, kind review that she left for us on Apple. Kelsey, we know that you heart cats, but we heart you. Cheers, girl, to that review. Thanks for listening. Thanks, Kelsey. Yeah, we love it. <laughs> Gotta love our reviews. Keep keep them coming, people. We'll give you a shout out. That's right. Makes our husbands <laughs> dance in the kitchen. Yeah, exactly. Uh, only on Saturday. <laughs> well, it's just Saturday. Yep. Maybe Sunday. Mm. All right. Well, I guess we'll get into this now. Yeah, give it to me. All right. So this week we are talking about Lennon Lacey. He is a 17-year-old African-American boy from Bladenboro, North Carolina. Ooh. Shout out to North Carolina. Where in the yeah. heck is that? It is about 100 miles, I knew you were going to ask me this, south of Raleigh. Hmm. So, small little town. I had never heard of it either, but I, it's not like I've ever heard of many towns in Raleigh or North Carolina. Um, yeah, 1,700 people, so it's not very big. And in August of 2014, he was just starting a new school year at West Bladen High School, where he was um, a linebacker on the football team. And on the night, yeah, Mm -hmm. on the night of August 28th, 2014, he was preparing for a game the next day. I think it was the first game of the season, um, but I'm not 100% sure about that. Um, He had washed and laid out his uniform just as he had done. Every other time before a game, packed a gym bag, 
This was his normal routine before night before game. His dad, Larry, um, saw him sometime around midnight. He had come out of his room to get some water. They kind of chatted for a second and then they both went into their bedrooms and a short time later, his dad heard the front door open and he didn't think much of it. He just figured Lennon stepped outside for a minute, get a fresh air for a second and dad fell asleep. So the next morning, his parents woke up um, and mom noticed, mom, her name is Claudia, noticed that he was gone and she just assumed that he had gone to school already. But then she noticed that his football gear was still there, which was weird because he would normally on game day take it with him to school. So she called the school to let him know that it was still at home and the school had told her that he hadn't been at school yet. So that was a little surprising for her. And then shortly after that, she received a phone call from the police and Lennon had been found at 7.30 that morning, that morning, hanging from a swing set in the middle of a trailer park. <gasps> yeah, hanging. Where they live, their trailer park? No, no. They lived in an apartment complex and this was a trailer park like several blocks away, close by, but not, it wasn't their trailer park. Um. And he was found by a resident of that trailer park who called 911 and let them know that someone had hung himself. Because, I mean, you see, see that and you just automatically assume someone hung themselves. Um, Lennon's mother got to the scene and they, he was already cut down. The 911 officer asked the resident who found him to cut him down. Not really sure how she did that. I mean, she was like this 57-year-old woman and he's this 200-something pound kid. <laughs> I don't know how oh, she did it. But... Right. He's a linebacker. Yeah. Yeah. He was a big kid. There's been some speculation around this and why the 911 operator would have him cut, have her cut him down because, I mean, clearly you need to preserve the scene. And I know I did listen to the 911 call and they were like, cut him down um, to see if he's breathing. But the lady was like, he is not like, breathing. Like she knew he was not breathing. Um, but apparently she cut him down somehow. And so Lennon's mom gets to the scene and she, she recognized her son from a distance as soon as she arrived. And she got a little bit closer, but not too close. And she noticed um, that he had some marks on his face. An autopsy was performed and it was determined a suicide within a week. And the police closed the investigation. And they labeled it a suicide as well. So, but Lennon's family just could not accept this. Um, he had shown no signs prior to this to cause them to believe that he would do that. Um, <clears throat> the autopsy stated that he was depressed due to a recent death of his uncle, but the family said that that was not true. He was dealing with it fine and grieving in his way, you know, but he, he wasn't any more depressed over this death than, you know, anybody would be from losing a family member. Um, the L Lacey family felt that it was determined to suicide too quickly. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so that they had, there were definitely things that needed to be taken into consideration that they felt were not. Um, and they, they list a few of them. So I'm gonna go through basically the stuff that they felt were not um, taken into consideration. So Lennon had just bought himself a new pair of Jordans for the start of the school year. And when he was found, those Jordans were missing and he had a pair of white Air Force Ones on that no one recognized in his family. And they were a size 10 and a half and Lennon was a size 12. So they're kind of confused as to why he would put a pair of shoes <laughs> nobody knew about and that were way too small on him so before he hung himself like somebody switched out his shoes yeah and that's took exactly how it seems yeah weird yeah so they felt that it would also be impossible for Lennon to hang himself from the swing set he was five foot nine and the crossbar that he was hanging from was seven foot six inches off the ground there were no swings on this swing set. I know I called it a swing set, but it was like essentially just like the bars and then a slide. <laughs> um, and there was nothing else around there for him to like climb up and then kick out from underneath him. Um, so they were like, well, how did he 
get himself in and through the noose to hang himself if it was seven feet six inches off the ground um Mm -hmm. the belts that were used were not his as stated by his mother and the coroner and the medical examiner actually believed that they may have been dog leashes and they wouldn't they didn't know where he would have gotten those from either and they also felt that it was a really weird place to commit suicide like to walk to this random trailer park and hang himself publicly it seemed more like that was he was put on display after he was killed to them um did he know anybody that lived in that trailer park like a friend or girlfriend no so and it is stated several times in almost all the articles that i um read about it was that this was mainly um the residents were predominantly white in this trailer park so they also thought that was a little suspicious too um The police also did not seal the scene off for six hours, which made collecting any kind of additional evidence hard because it was contaminated by whoever was walking through. Um, And they also never took DNA from his fingers, nails, to rule out any contact with someone else at the time of death, which seems like a pretty natural thing to do. Like, let's collect DNA from the entire body, like everywhere. Yeah, it seems like they did not treat it at all like a crime scene. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it seemed to me. So um, the attorneys for the Lacey's, um, Alan Rogers, revealed that the mortician that took care of the body said he noticed a lump on Lennon's head when he first got the body. And he also says that there were abrasions on his shoulders and arms that resembled those of people he had taken care of that had died after a bar fight. So he's saying Hmm. that there looks like there's like wounds other than just him, that he was hung. And there was no mention of this lump in the autopsy, but it does mention some marks and abrasions on the body. And the autopsy attributes them to ants that they said were all over his body at the scene. I'm not sure about you, but I can't imagine that ants would cause that much of an abrasion I mean I don't know I I guess I I don't know much about ants but like could ants cause abrasions (laughs) no I mean an abrasion is a bruise right right yeah no ants are not gonna bruise you right I mean I guess unless you were allergic to them I don't know but it that seemed a little fishy to me too even if he did have them all over his body because he had been there all night I you know I don't know I still don't believe that well true crime fact you don't bruise after you're dead. Anyway. Oh, that's true. Because blood's not flowing. Very true. Very true. Good point. So he's not going to get abrasions from ants, number one. And number two, he's not going to get them when he's already dead. Right. Yeah. I was also thinking, like, even, like, cuts, too. Could that, that could be an abrasion, too. But still. It would still bruise too if you had a cut, like typically. I right. Yeah. Anyway, I thought it was fishy. So then, also a week after he was buried, his grave was defaced, and a local teen was arrested for it. But not much else is found on this, and his family was never told who. Like whenever they questioned and asked, they were just given the excuse, like, "Oh, we're taking care of it. Don't worry." So I have not found anything on who this person was, if he knew. Lennon, nothing. I, don't, I, I know nothing about who this person was. Um, there has been mention of some racial discrimination. The town was 80% white, 19% black. And at the time, like I mentioned, the trailer park that he was found in was predominantly white. Um, the family also mentions that, was, that there was an incident about a year before where another teen stole Lennon's phone and when Lennon got it back, they got into a fight and this boy threatened to kill him and hang him. But again, nothing, I don't know that they looked into it. Maybe they did, but she doesn't think, mom does not think that they looked into that. Um, Another interesting aspect of Lennon's life was that he was in a relationship with a 31 year old white woman named Michelle Brimhall. Any reaction to 31 years old? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um yeah interesting i mean oh, go ahead i don't think michelle would have hung him no but 
No, I don't really think, I don't think she has anything to do with it. But um, interesting fact is that the um, age of consent in North Carolina is 16. I didn't know that. So really? yeah, he's 17. So this is a totally legal relationship. Had it been, you know, a couple of years earlier, it wouldn't have been. But anyway, still 31 years old. She's recently divorced and had moved from Illinois. Um, she lived with a couple down the road from Lacey's apartment complex for a while. There were also stories about this couple that they did know Lacey and Lacey hung out with their son, um, but that there may have been some racism anyway. Like the wife doesn't, says they don't, they're not racist, but they had racist signs in their yard at one point because they were having some issues with some people in their yard. And so they put these signs basically to stay out. And I don't want to use the words that they had on their signs. Stop. So personally, you can't convince me you're not racist if you're using those words and putting them like stay out <laughs> with, you know, the N word on it. You can't convince me you're not oh, racist no. at all. Like there's a little bit in you at least. <laughs> but anyway, so this couple apparently was racist. They say they're not. They say they regret putting these signs in that it was just something to get the, the people that they were trying to keep out of their yard, out of their yard, but it wasn't a generalization is what they said. Regardless. Oh, good grief. Yeah. Regardless, um, Michelle ends up moving out of their apartment because they kind of have a disagreement over their relationship as well. Um, so she moves out and she ends up moving into an apartment a, or a house across the street from the complex that Lacey or Lennon lives in. I keep calling him Lacey. I don't know why, but his name is Lennon. Um, I like that name. Lennon. I do too. Because I don't know why I don't, I'm not using it, but, um, so according to the family and friends, she was a drug addict and prostitute. Lennon's parents didn't approve of the relationship, but they said it wasn't anything to do with race. It was just because of the age difference and her drug use. They didn't want their 17 year old dating a 31 year old drug addict. <laughs> I wouldn't either. <laughs> and prostitute. Yes. And prostitute. Now she denies most of this. Um, her father confirmed that she had a drug problem. He didn't say that she still had it at that time, but she has had one in the past. Um, it's also... And she has poor choices and friends. Well, yeah. Clearly. Yes. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's also speculated that people in town did not like the idea of a biracial relationship. Um, and Michelle and Lennon did try and keep mm -hmm. it a secret. Um, they would, you know, go to the store together, but they wouldn't hold hands or show off their relationship in public. Um, and also, they they had told his family that they had ended the relationship. So at that the time of his death, the family didn't think that they were together, but they still were, she says. Uh, Michelle also states that she doesn't think Lennon committed suicide. She said he had too much love for life. Um and he just, he was focused on football and college. There was also speculation that the night Lennon left, that night that Lennon left his apartment at midnight, he may have gone to confront Michelle because he had just seen a car pull up to her house and a male, Kate, got out and went into her place. Michelle denies this. She says he didn't come to her apartment that night. Clearly we won't, we don't, we'll never know. Um, and she also does not think that her ex-husband had anything to do with it. And her statement on this was, I don't think he would take a bus down from Illinois to kill him. So clearly he doesn't have transportation and she doesn't think that he would be bothered that much by this, that he would do it. Oh my gosh. That's why he wouldn't. Kill yeah. Him? Yeah. That was her reason. He's not going to come and kill him because he doesn't like to ride buses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Other than that, he probably would. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Michelle. Okay. <laughs> Oh, gosh. The Lacey's um, teamed up with the North Carolina branch of the NAACP, who also rejected the medical examiner's findings, and they hired an independent pathologist who contradicted the medical examiner's findings. Oh, sorry. That was kind of double there. Um, it doesn't say what, what their findings were. It just says that it contradicted whatever the initial medical examiner found. Um, they convinced the FBI to launch an investigation in December of 2014, which lasted about two years. But in 2016, they closed the case stating that there was no evidence to pursue a federal criminal civil rights charge. So 
From the start, Claudia, mom, was upset about the lack of investigation into Lennon's death, but she appreciated the FBI taking the time to investigate and go over all of the evidence that the police had. However, she still didn't have answers because all of her, to all of her questions, mainly the missing shoes and why he would have shoes too small. They could not, no matter what, could not answer why that would be or anything. There was no DNA, I'm assuming, found anywhere on or near, like, on the shoes or on his socks or... No, not that, not that I have found. There is literally not a whole lot on this case, like, out in the public. Like, this is what it said. It was like, they investigated, two years later, they said no. Like, there was no, and all it would state was like, oh, they went over all the evidence, but it wasn't, like, put out there. Um... The other thing that's weird is if you kill someone and you want their shoes because they have good shoes, mm-hmm. you take them. Right. But you don't take your shoes and put them on the dead person. Right. Because you're leaving your own evidence behind. That is weird. Right. Right. And whatever evidence that they could get, which was mentioned earlier, like could, everything was contaminated because they didn't seal the... Um, the scene off for six hours so right. i'm sure that there was stuff collected but it's like how do they prove that it was from the murderer but i don't know i don't know um the one thing that they did dispute or find more evidence on was that they had a picture that showed that the noose was lower than previously thought so he probably could have reached it however his brother well, who i saw do an interview says he still doesn't understand how he could do it himself because the way it was um, tied, he would have to, like, pull it open and hold it open, get his head in, and then let go. Like, he still was, like, confused as to how he could actually still do it himself. But they're just saying, well, we can prove that he can reach that spot and do it. But if you can reach it, then how do you hang yourself? How are you hanging? Yeah, you just put your feet down. So I still, I'm still very confused. <laughs> Um, I'm not convinced that this case ended the way it should. There's still so many questions in my mind and in his parents' mind. And unfortunately, when researching it, there were more similar cases to this than I had any idea of when I was looking for a case. Um, As in cases where the investigation was completely bought? Well, I, so here's the reason I chose this. Well, part of the reason I chose it is I've always thought that crimes against African-Americans are not publicly aired or given as much attention as others. And I know that this might hit some other people in different ways, but um, this is just how I feel. And I don't feel like it was treated well at all. I don't feel like it was publicized enough, probably, um, for people to come forward. I, I mean, I know it was out there, but I mean, think about it. This is the one thing that always enters my mind, like ask anybody how many um, cases of (laughs) little cute white girls that you can name the names that have gone missing and have been murdered and you can name them. Like, can you say the opposite of an African-American? Like, could you name more than Trayvon? (laughs) Hmm. I don't know. I think of it that way. And I'm not even saying that I can, like, I, I, I feel like I'm even in that you know, because I just watch the news. I don't go d- d- digging for it, but I shouldn't have to go digging for it. I should just, it should just be out there um, more. I completely agree. Even like the last case, the Faye Sweatlick case that we, you know, just covered, when she went missing and was killed and found, they knocked on every single door. Right. And interviewed every single resident, 300 homes. Mm-hmm. And all 300 were essentially questioned. Mm -hmm. And, like, there was definitely not an open shut case. Now, granted, she was a six-year-old kid, but still, he's a kid. Yeah. He's a 17-year-old kid, you know? Yeah, and there's, like, no mention of that. It's like, we we don't even have the details of how they investigated it. Like, I I looked at every article I could find on this, and there's just, like, no details on what their investigation included. Like, did they knock on every trailer door? I don't know. <laughs> and they wouldn't even tell they should them. Have. Yeah, they should have. 
And maybe they did, but I don't know. Like you can't find it. And so when I was like just looking for a case out there uh, and specifically for African-American, I found several names. I found a website that had like, I think it was seven or eight um, forgotten African-American um, murders, murder victims. And so Lennon Lacey was one of them. And when I was clicking on all of them, I, I want to say that there was like three or four that were hanging victims. Mm. Like they were lynched. And that struck me. And that's also why I chose this. Cause I was just like, there's, there's still a thing out there. People, there's still racism out there and there's still lynching happening, even though it might not be as much as there used to be. And this actually did get turned into, um, a documentary, which I haven't watched yet. Um, it's a PBS documentary. Um, it's not readily available to anybody. You have to pay to be a member. And um, yeah. so I do want to watch it, but it, and it basically tells his story, but then also goes into the history of lynching in the South. And so it, it should be interesting, but it just makes me sad because I don't feel like that there was justice for Lennon, like, and there won't be because they have closed this case. They, they ruled it a, a, a suicide. The FBI took two years to relook into it and still ruled it a suicide. So they're not going to get any answers unless they keep digging themselves, which I don't know if they have the means to do that for the family. But is the family still campaigning on his behalf? Yeah. I mean, I mean yeah, I still see stuff um, that they, that they post and that, yeah, they're still, they, they're convinced that he was murdered. So I don't think that they'll give up, but I just don't know how far that they are able to take it. Um, but I just feel so badly because he was really spoken highly of um, one of the articles. Somebody had said that he would literally specifically make a beeline to you just so that he can shake your hand when he said hello to you or constantly ask others if they needed help. Like, oh, you're moving. Can I help you move some furniture? Like, what can I do for you? And just I feel badly for somebody, for anybody to not have answers, but 17 year old kid and just don't you know you don't have, you're never gonna have any justice for him because you know that his family knows he did not commit suicide I don't believe he did based on the stuff that I still have questions about and I know this was a quick one and but but that's that was the reality of it there was just not a lot out there to even answer my any questions for, uh, for me <laughs> yeah that's a crazy tragedy on so many levels yeah that's a really really disturbing story yeah Anyway, so that's all I got today, people. <laughs> you got anything else for I me? I liked it. <laughs> um, I loved it. I loved that case. I think that it's great that you are, you know, we can't give justice to Lennon and his family, but we can certainly talk about the wrongs. And I think that's cool. I like it. And if you guys like it, please hit subscribe for us and give us a follow. We have gotten such great reviews and we love them so much. They really make us so happy and they help us and we like to hear from you. So give us a rate, give us a review on Apple podcast. Um, come find us on social media, Instagram and Facebook. You can send us messages there. You can send us an email at crimesandclosets at gmail.com. If you have any case suggestions for us, send them over because we really as you know love these small town cases <laughs> and if something's bothering you about a case we want to know about it so send it over we want to hear and remember the world is scary people suck hide in your closet bye